Friends is like, right, okay, so we've got ourselves a number eight. It genuinely like, just went with it. It was like, Belly, you're going to play number eight. Big Belly's at eight. And so I know that he could play a little bit, but they love him off strike plays, eh? Yeah, so good to see. Well, Ryan, like, you obviously like to get under people's skin or, like, you know, have a bit of sledge and a bit of crack on the pitch. Was that a tactic that you used in the URC semi final when you get beaten by 70 against Leinster? No, not that one. Not that one. That well, was, hold, on, uh, hold on a that second. That one ain't gone too far. You were fighting, sorry, shirt grabbing in the first couple of minutes. You had a couple of boys pinned to the ground, giving it stacks, and it sort of didn't happen for you, just did it? Yeah, well, someone had to try at the beginning, didn't they? But once it went too far, it went too far. So, that you can't, like, first 20 minutes, you can go hell for leather, but then when you start to feel the swing of the game and, you know, the swing of that game, yeah, Albert, he's back here. This isn't working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> oh, Jesus. But, nah, it's, um, the English are definitely up to it. They're, they're, they're winding people up and the Aussies can lose their heads, can't they? So, but then again, it can go the other way. But it's when a team's on top and you can see that. Like, the way that England were on top in the first half, that's where it's all coming. That's where all the heat's coming. And that's where people are getting wound up. They're giving away stupid penalties. Just a little ruffle of the head saying, oh, well, I'm yeah, mate yeah. slapping the arms. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're driving more when you're, you're coming over. You give them a bit of a push to let them know we scored. Uh, you're like, yeah, just dominate your lad. Get back. Yeah. <laughs> Hand in the wrong, the wrong place. Yeah. Getting up. But no. I don't know what you're talking about, by the way, Stephen, in that, in that Lynx game. I was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> not sure what you're up to. I think it was the, excuses. I, I was in commentary with uh, John Barkley, and he was just sitting beside me, going, "I bet you everything that I own that that's Ryan Wilson at the bottom of that rocky game." And I was like, and then all of a sudden, you big bodies would get up, and there's you just like grabbing on to someone hit the bottom of the rock, and then like three three minutes later, oh, there's another scuffle off the ball, and John would just turn around and bet you any money it's Ryan Wilson at the bottom of that break time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they pick on me, mate. Time. They pick on me. What do you want me to do? They're, they're bullying me. <laughs> Stephen, in your career, did you ever sort of go into a match knowing that an opposition player like could be potentially targeted with, you know, chat or, or, or a bit of handbags or something along those lines to try and give you a, a psychological edge? Um, not really, to be honest. You always targeted players more, got more technical probably because of maybe the, a skill set, which was maybe a bit of a weakness. Um, and then you've maybe like the amount of players that are like, you know, single arm carriers with the, with the ball. Um, so like you target the, obviously, the, you know, the single arm carriers and then get stuck in them saying, oh, you can't carry it in your right hand. Why you can keep carrying it in your left hand? And, you know, I'm going to take it. It's like taking sweets off a baby and just that, that, that type of thing. But to be honest with you, I was very quiet on the pitch because I was always so fucked. <laughs> I was so knackered that I couldn't even open my mouth. Um, it was hands on the knees sucking in as much oxygen as I could um, yeah and, and just get on with my own job I was, I was very very quiet didn't really say too much to, to many people and I didn't really get that much sledging back actually just because I wasn't trying to wind too many people up but yeah it was more more just on a technical side of things just getting into people that, uh, technical that you telling me you telling me that you boys never went into games trying to target someone physically uh, yeah like I, I tried to target everybody physically yeah, um, but you would have had it. You would have been like, "Listen, ten, right? Let's get you know a couple little late shots here and yeah. there." Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think, I think the European Cup quarter final, uh, two thousand and twelve against Munster away, and we were seeded eighth. Obviously, Munster first, so we got the shit draw going to Thoman, um, and like O'Connell was playing, David Wallace was playing, O'Gara was playing. Um, and I can remember back to one of my first games for Ulster. We were playing away to Munster, and like Ronan O'Gara, I come onto the pitch as like a hundred kg dripping wet uh, young fella, like and he and he grabbed me and he was telling me he was going to do the F and S and F. <laughs> Who the hell are you? You think you're this? You think you're the best player since sliced bread? You're absolutely fucking shit and all this. And like I can remember that in my head. And like me and Rog get on like a house on fire. He's an absolute legend of a bloke and uh, obviously on the coach but uh, yeah that game I can remember getting stuck in the, the, the Raj because I think like we kept 
getting penalties at scrum time. A foal was doing a great job for us. Ryan Pienaar kept knocking them over from the halfway, knocking them over from the halfway. And you could see Rog getting agitated, getting, you know, the pressure was just starting to annoy him. So, uh, yeah, any time I got the ball, I made sure I put the head down and ran, ran straight towards where Rog was, trying to get myself a few easy metres. Exactly. And Stevie, you're saying you didn't, on the field, you didn't tend to kind of, apart from that, those particular incidents no. tend to, uh, you know, give too, too much back. Talk us through, though, 2012, victim of a bite, English bad boy Dylan Hartley, who, who, who's denied on this podcast last year that, uh, and he couldn't actually remember your name. Uh, what, he, what he denied oh. he ever did it. Oh. That's he what denied, he denied he ever did it. And why did he get banned? What's your What's your recollection? I, I think he's a cheap shot merchant. So I always have done. Um, he's obviously a liar as well. So when we obviously played against England in 2012, bottom of a rock, far left hand side. Like I went to Dubai two day, three days after that. And a week later in Dubai, I still had the teeth marks of Dylan Hartley's teeth in my finger a week later. So, like, I'm hardly going to stand on the pitch and bite my own finger and go, hold on, ref. It's, you know, somebody, it was only me and Dylan Hartley on the floor. Like, it couldn't have been anybody else. Unless a dog fucking ran out from behind the stadium and bit me in the finger and then ran off again. So, like, see if he had, a, see if he had admitted it. See if he had went, rang me up and I hear, see, sorry about that, bit your finger. You know, as he talks about, what is it, the, uh, the red mess comes over him. Um, and I would have went, all right, no worries, pal. Like, we all make mistakes. See you later. Um, I'll catch you around. Like, my pal of mine, Roger Wilson, played with him in Northampton and said, like, he's a top lad, really good bloke. Um, I have, I, I've sort of been in and around his company a few times, but uh, I've never got chatting to him. That's what I was going to say. Do you never cross paths in the in this commentary world now and the sort of media world? No, I haven't actually. No, no, um, not at all actually. Uh, but I sat beside him actually, or not beside him. I sat beside Eddie Jones at a World Rugby Awards, and it was in, another one that's usually in Monaco. Yeah. Well, I, I missed out in the one in Monaco, and it was in London. <laughs> so <laughs> I was sitting. I was sitting at the. Uh, at a table there was like a toji and a, a lot of the other lads and Hartley was at my table but like it was a huge big round table and like he was, was fucking flowers and vases and everything and he was the far side and Eddie Jones was sitting right beside me and like I was like what am I doing at this table no you just you walk up to the table and you sort of automatically look around to see who's going to be you know sitting beside you and I was alright so all the other lads shook hands with me and said hello apart from Dylan Hartley so, like, he's obviously got a bit more beef with me than I do with him, but... Um, yeah. Maybe he's worried that you only had four fingers and he fought with you. <laughs> Stevie Four Fingers. That was me. Stevie Four Fingers. Stevie Four Fingers. Uh, but, yeah, like, I, I, I made a complaint to the referee straight away in match. Honestly, if that had happened in this day and age with all the camera angles and everything nowadays, like, he probably would have got banned for a couple of seasons, like... Um, but that's what, that's the way it goes. Australia, mate. Yeah, Australian. I know. I'm completely literally. I'm like, because that's I find that so in, like insightful. Getting getting the of, of course getting the other side. And as you said, why would you bite your own finger? Yeah, why would um, bite your own finger? But like, uh, I sort of, like I completely, Mark. I completely forgotten about it until you sort of asked me there. <laughs> like, Sorry. And uh, yeah, like again, like what is it? Fucking ten years later, if he if he rang me up and went, look, let's put this to bed. I'm sorry, man. I bit your finger. I go, yeah, no worries, right? Sweet, that's it. Put the bed. I'll not speak about it ever again. But he has the audacity to call me a liar, like. Um, but yeah, sure, he got banned anyway. I think that tells its own story. <laughs>